By now you should be familiar with matter and the different types of matter that exist. So matter can be separated into two types, mixtures and pure substances. There are two types of mixtures, heterogeneous mixtures and homogeneous mixtures. And then there are two types of pure substances, elements and compounds. Now all of those elements can be arranged into something called the periodic table, which we use regularly during chemistry. The periodic table is broken down into two major parts. We have groups, and the groups are the vertical columns that exist on the periodic table, and there are 18 of them if you count from left to right across the table. Sometimes these groups are also called families, maybe like the carbon family or the nitrogen family. Any element that is in the same group will have similar chemical and physical properties. So for example, all of the elements that are in this red group right here, called the alkali metals, are flammable in water, very soft metallic compounds. All of these ones over here that are in purple are, are all gases that don't react at all. The periodic table is also arranged into horizontal rows called periods, and there are seven of them going from the top of the periodic table to the bottom. Those seven periods are also called series. So way down here you have a blue period that is called the lanthanide series, and then this purple row down here at the bottom, that is called the actinide series. And notice that those blue and purple rows correspond to these same blue and purple rows right here, and that's because they actually get inserted right into this blank space. That would actually make the periodic table a lot wider than you normally see, but we condense it by moving those two rows below the periodic table to save space. When you look at the periods on the periodic table, any elements that are close together are going to be very similar, and any elements that are far apart are going to be very different from each other. So an element that is, say, here in orange is very similar in properties to the element that is next to it, but not exactly. But when I compare this element here on the left with this element way over here on the right, their properties are very different from each other. Also, when you look at the periodic table, there is an arrangement of different types of elements. All of the metals are on the left side of the periodic table. When you look at the periodic table, all those elements that are in yellow, those are your metals. So notice that probably about two-thirds to 75% of the periodic table is made up of metals. Metals are shiny solids. They are good conductors of heat and good conductors of electricity. They are also malleable and they are ductile. Malleable means that the metal can be hit with a hammer and flattened into sheets whereas ductile means that you can take the metal and draw it out into long strands called wires. Along the middle of the periodic table there are semi-metals and all those semi-metals can be found along a zigzag line on the right hand side. So on this periodic table all of the metals are listed in purple right along a diagonal line on the right hand side. Those are the semi-metals, sometimes also called metalloids. And because they are semi-metals, they will have some characteristics of metals and some characteristics of non-metals. So you can see here that silicon is a silver solid, like a metal would be, and it's kind of shiny like a metal would be. But if I hit it with a hammer, it would actually shatter into lots of little pieces. So it is not malleable. I can't flatten silicon. It's a more brittle than a regular metal. On the far right-hand side of the table are all of the non-metals. So on this periodic table, all of the nonmetals are in green on the far right. Those nonmetals are going to be poor conductors of heat, poor conductors of electricity. They can be in any state. They can be gases, they can be liquids, or they can be solids. But notice those solids are usually brittle, meaning again that if you hit them with a hammer, they'll shatter into smaller pieces rather than flatten. And then one special group on the periodic table are called the noble gases, and that would be group 18. So that is the far group on the right-hand side of the periodic table. It has helium at the top, and then it also has elements like neon and argon in that. And all of those are gases, and they are all inert. And inert means unreactive or non-reactive. So all of those elements don't react with any other element on the periodic table.